purposes of Lab 4 are to demonstrate some methods for generating random numbers using technology, and also to use those methods to investigate a core course concept, that of a sampling distribution. Now, to demonstrate this concept, we are going to be simulating two separate games. In game one, we will have the computer simulate the tossing of a fair six-sided die, and then we will simply record the number shown as our winnings. In the second game, we'll have the computer simulate 10 tosses of a fair die and we'll win the average shown. Now, both of these games are basically sampling from a population of the numbers 1 through 6, a population whose mean and standard deviation are easily computed. In game 1, we are drawing a sample of size 1, while in game 2, we are drawing a sample of size 10. And we'll see in this lab how the distribution of the corresponding amounts 1 depends on the sample size. To simulate the results of a chance experiment or a sampling experiment in R is relatively simple. Let's start by simulating our first game in which we're going to toss a single six-sided die once. The first step is to create a vector which contains the population of numbers which we would like to draw from. You can do that using the concatenate command previously discussed, or you can use the shortcut x equals 1 colon 6, which will create a vector of integers from 1 to 6 spaced out by 1. Now to play the game or to have the R Studio simulate the game once, we use the sample command and we sample from our population X one time. So in this case, you won $2. Now if I want to simulate the game a large number of times, like say a thousand, the replicate command comes in handy. The way the replicate works is it allows you to specify the number of times you would like to repeat a command and then followed by the command which you would like to repeat, in this case, sample X1 and that gave us a thousand different die rolls. Now I can also do things, I can also save this as a vector, and the advantage of that is I can do things like compute the mean, which is pretty close to the population mean of 3.5, as we might expect. I can complete, compute the standard deviation, which is fairly close to the population SD as well. And I can even plot a histogram of the results and you'll notice that although Minitab chose the binnings in a somewhat strange way, which you can adjust by looking at the help histogram menu, we did get a fairly uniform distribution of one through sixes here. What about the second game? In the second game, we wanted to toss a die 10 times and win the average of the 10 amounts. Well, you might guess that using the sample command, but changing the second argument to 10 would produce this result. Yeah. However, when you do so, you get a strange error and that's because of the fact that when you use sample, it samples without replacement. And clearly there is no way to draw a sample of 10 without replacement from the numbers one through six, because that would be more samples than there are numbers to draw from. We can easily remedy this by adding an extra argument here, replace equals true. Okay. And now we've, we've performed the task of simulating 10 die rolls. And you might recall from a previous lecture that simply taking the mean using the mean command will then tell us the mean of the results. In this case, we won $3.4. Now, if I want to repeat that a large number of times, like a thousand times, we can do the same thing we did before by nesting it inside the replicate command. So now we're doing a thousand simulations of this game where we win the average of 10 die rolls. Yeah. If I look at the mean, it is once again pretty close to the population mean. But if I look at the standard deviation, we notice that the standard deviation has dropped. It's about a third of what it was before, or less than a third of what it was before. In class, we will, or have, depending on when you watch this video, discuss the relationship between the standard deviation of the sample mean and the population standard deviation. Finally, we can look at a histogram of R and here we note that the shape is quite different from when we drew a sample of size 1. In this case, we get this fairly symmetric distribution here, and it's centered at the mean of 3.5, trails off in either direction. And that's because when you're averaging a large number of observations, the small and the large contributions tend to even out, and you tend to end up with most means being somewhere here in the middle. And that is one of the keys to the central limit theorem, which is also an important result which we'll be discussing in class.